Hey, I'm Tiffany Jernigan, and I'm a developer advocate for Amazon Elastic Container Service, or ECS. In this video, we're going to talk about task placement for ECS. ECS runs containers on a managed cluster of Amazon EC2 virtual machines, or as we call them, instances. When you create an ECS cluster in a specific region, such as US West 2, the instances within it can span multiple AWS availability zones, such as US West 2A and US West 2B. If we take a look at one of the EC2 instances running in our cluster, we can see that it is running ECS tasks, which are groupings of running Docker containers, the ECS container agent, which helps our tasks communicate with the ECS control plane, and the Docker daemon. OK, so we've seen a little bit of how ECS works. Let's talk about task placement, which is how ECS decides where to run tasks on the cluster. When starting a task or a service, a decision needs to be made to pick which instance to use. By default, if you simply run tasks using the Run Task API, the tasks are placed randomly on your instances within your cluster. Or if you create a service with the Create Service API, your tasks are spread across availability zones for high availability. And previously, if you wanted to have custom placement, you needed to make the decision yourself and call the Start Task API or write your own scheduler. So we created the Task Placement Engine. The instance selection process can be viewed as a funnel with layers of filters. All of the instances go in, and only one comes out. Initially, we start off with all of the instances in our cluster. We can then use the AWS CLI or the AWS console to run a task. I'll be using the CLI. First, we need a task definition file to create a task. Here's a simple example. Any instances which don't meet our memory, CPU, or port requirements are removed. Now we get into the task placement engine. Here, we either stick with the defaults or choose to set task placement constraints and strategies. Constraints are applied first. If an instance doesn't fit, it won't be used. We currently have two types of placement constraints, distinct instance and member of. Distinct instance is what it sounds like. All tasks are placed on unique instances. As you can see, there is only one task at most running on every single instance. The member of constraint describes a set. It is for anything you could define as an attribute or a task. Here we see this new field expression. This command will create five copies of the task and only run them on T2 micro instances. And here, you can see that we have our tasks running only on T2 micro. You can use attributes we have defined, or you can create custom ones. Strategies are then used to sort the rest of the instances by preference to determine which is the best. ECS offers three types of strategies, random, bin pack, and spread. Random places tasks ad hoc across your instances. The BinPack strategy tries to fit your workloads in as few instances as possible for maximum utilization. With BinPack, you can optimize for either memory or CPU. As you can see, all of the tasks are running on a single instance. Spread places tasks based on your chosen attribute. This is an optimal strategy for helping to ensure high availability for your applications. In production, you may want to use multiple strategies. For example, spreading tasks across AZs and BinPacking. This is called chaining. To learn more about task placement or see examples, check out our ECS task placement blog series or visit the ECS documentation. Thanks for watching.